she's cute as a bun. Give it up for Kid Cadet. Thank you. Let's give it up for James, ladies and gentlemen, James. You're going to see her in just under an hour. She's going to be doing Kane's panel. All right. But we know why we're here right now, right? We're here to see, maybe you know him as Cactus Jack. Maybe you know him as Mankind. Or maybe you know him as the ladies' man, Jude Love. All right. Without any further ado, here we go. Give it up for Mick That's not the song. That's our air microphone's right over there. That was a song, that wasn't the song, but that's all right. Big Foley, everybody. Is it on? And the mic's not on. So far, so good. We're, we're doing good. Oh, there we go. There we go. Up, down, got it. Thank you, Heather. Let's grab me here. Oh, um, got it bumped. It's moments like these when I wish I'd worn socks. It's, it's a lot of shin showing. Uh, the one thing we found from doing these things is, uh, and get that photos in, if we do the five second pose, <laughs> that would be cool because the less cameras, you, you know, the one unfortunate thing is that when people are honest at these panels, then these clips show up and end up hurting us. So if we, I'll give you a good example of that in a minute. And I see the witch back there who showed up. I don't even think, you're, are you a wrestling fan? No, but we had a nice talk and I was like, come to my panel, I think you'll enjoy it. As I begin the show by reprimanding people for what they have not done yet. <laughs> but I was at a panel at uh, Comic Con in San Diego and it was me, Dolph Ziggler, Daniel Bryan, maybe one other guy. And Dolph was asked like what his goal was. And he was like, uh, you know, and I saw a tweet like six months later. It said, check out the reaction of at Real Mick Foley listening to at Heel Ziggler. And Dolph was asked about, you know, what the goal was. He's like, I want to be the first person in, the last person out, work as hard as I can so I can move up the ladder and maybe one day wrestle John Cena and take his five moves. <laughs> and you see me go like, Ooh. And Stand afterwards, on. I told him about Bull Durham and the wrestling cliches. That was uh, Kevin Costner teaching the baseball cliches. I just want to help the ball club. I want to do my best. I was like, that's what you need to do. So that's what we want to avoid. And that's why we try to keep the, the things off. Besides, 45 minutes from a stationary position is just boring TV. So if we put the phones down and we'll take the car we'll take them out again at the end and do another five second pose, it'll be a much more enjoyable time. Make sure everyone. you get the ankles if you are going to be taking the a ankles, picture. Yeah. This is, I'm thinking you crop it right and here. And these are the long sweatpants. When I did the, uh, my daughter and I did a thing for WWE Network kicking off Holy Foley and I had like a, the regular size sweatpants because I'm taller than people think, you know, but I'm, I'm a little heavier than I'd like to be. But on that show, it appeared as if I was almost wearing pantaloons. I was like up there like this, like a little foolish. All right. But I know Heather's got some questions. I do. And I've got answers, and then we're going to take <laughs> some questions uh, from the audience. Well, is it okay if we mention your new title? Can I, can I call you Minister Mick, if that's you all right? You can. You can bring that up, yeah. I have officiated one wedding in my life. And that was your wedding. Yes, it was. And uh, so I, be I became an ordained <laughs> minister just to officiate Kid Cadet's wedding. And today, as an honorarium, uh, Kid and her lovely husband, Jude, uh, showed off their matching Foley tattoos. Yeah, so we got Mick and both of us as Sockos. <laughs> so there it is. It's cute. It's cute. It's a good time. So what I do, whenever I meet someone who's taken the time pain, little pain goes in, right? Time, yes. pain, and money. To have my image indelibly marked on their skin permanently, lifetime. I will go out of my way to be as big a jerk to them <laughs> as possible. Thank you for that. So they regret that decision for the rest of their life. Well, I put you above flair, <laughs> which I thought was, you know, good. That's for, uh, yeah. So, um, good company. Before we open up things to the audience, I, I, this might be kind of random, Mick, but I wanted to bring this up, and um, I'm not sure whether people here would know either, but do you know that you and Ariana Grande have something in common? I know this is kind of weird. So, We've... Ariana Grande put out a song, 
and it's to the tune of my favorite things from The Sound of Music. Oh, yeah? Do you know where I'm going with this? Uh, yes, because I once did a promo to the tune of, of my favorite things from The Sound of Music. Will, will you sing it for us? I will. I believe it was on the, H, the uh, WWE Network that special. That was. But I was talking about how... Uh, I would try to mix things up. At that time, you would do up to 50, sometimes more market-specific promos. And I did not know that the, go, the, uh, like the uh, time-honored method was to give the same promo and just change the dates and the times and the places. And I would try to have like 50 different promos. And some of them worked and some of them didn't, but at least I was trying different things. And so by the time I got to WWF, I had like thousands of repetitions in. It was like part of the muscle memory process. And when I showed up, maybe my first or second day for market-specific interviews, I just started singing. And it went like something like this. It went, my opponent at the time, I walked right into a big angle with Sting. So it was one of the two rivalries that really helped make me. Sting in WCW in 1991, The Undertaker in WWE, WWF, 1996. So I led off with this. I led off with you're, you're filming this. You're filming me singing. And now I'm not going to sing. Let me channel my inner Sylvester Stallone. Put it down. Put it down. All right. Steel chairs and trash cans and hard wooden tables. Drop landing on concrete as long as I'm able. Dropping an elbow on poor helpless Sting. These are a few of my favorite things. Bang, bang! There you go. Beautiful. I think it's going to be Grammy Award winning Mick Foley next time we do a panel. <laughs> so Ariana Grande was the one who sang Pete Davidson, right? Yeah. And oh, you I, know that? We have a Pete Davidson connection because Pete... Uh, Pete came, I was, did shows with Pete when he was breaking into comedy. He was only 16, 17. And he had a photo taken at Toys R Us in 2004 in New York City. I don't know if people know this. Pete lost his dad on 9-11. Uh, Comedy was his way of, you know, comforting him and you know, dealing with that loss. And he had a photo of himself from 2004 with me when he was just a little kid. And so, yeah, I've known Pete for quite a while. Well, so we have that in common as well. It's breaking news. It is breaking. Other breaking news is okay. that the wedding I officiated for Heather will be, Kid Cadet, will be highlighted on an upcoming episode of Say Yes to the Dress. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like to brag about much, but unless they, thank you, unless they seriously mess up the editing, that will be a really good episode. Can we... Do we tell them what was in your fanny pack, or do we make them watch the episode to find out? How many people have, you, have seen Say Yes to the Dress? All right. So, what, Randy is the star of Say Yes to the Dress? Yeah, I'd, yeah. Never, I'd never seen it, honestly. But as soon as I saw Randy and Heather, the kid's mom was like, oh, that's Randy. I was like, I can play off this guy. You know, wrestling's prepared me really well. And I had the fanny pack on. And I understand completely that when you choose a man with no fashion sense to help you make the most important fashion decision of your life, he's there partially because it's going to make for good TV, right? So Randy was appalled by my fanny pack, especially when, when Kid came out. It was a perfect dress. She had tears in her eyes. Everyone was so happy. And I was like, there's only one thing that can make this better. And I took off my fanny pack and I started to put it around her waist. And whether Randy was actually diving to stop me from putting the fanny pack on Kid or whether he was just pretending to dive, it doesn't matter because it looks like he's literally diving to stop me. He's like, don't you dare. And so when we did the post you know, show interviews, um, they said, okay, what's in that fanny pack? And I didn't say, hey, guess what's in my fanny pack? And I'm like, oh, this is such a softball. You know? So I'm like, okay, you know, I've got the, you know, the front and bottom teeth in here. I've got something in here. And then I was like, and here's a, an extra pair of underwear. And they go, you've got an extra pair of underwear? And I was like, it's a two-day trip. I'm going to travel light. <laughs> and, and so when I showed up for the wedding, which was like six weeks later, yeah. and I look, I had a jacket and a tie and a pair of slacks on, and, and the uh, showrunner, who's in charge of the runs the show, goes, you don't have the fanny pack? I was like, oh, I've got the fanny pack in the car. I was like, you want me to get it? She's like, I think people will like to see it. So I officiated her wedding with a fanny pack on. So it's good. It's really good TV. I'm sure there are people who want to talk wrestling here, 
But we're talking weddings and yeah. dresses. <laughs> Fanny packs. Oh, my. Riveting. <laughs> All right. We can talk more wrestling. Right. If you guys have a question, we have a microphone right over uh, yonder. So um, Just line up at the... Uh, and here's... the la Last weekend, or two weekends ago, there was a young man I'd met at my table, and he wanted to uh, ask a question, and he felt like I had embarrassed him, and he took off, I, and he was in tears. He was so upset. And so the only... Sometimes the words won't do... No words will do. So I gave him twenty dollars and put a smile back on his face. Yeah, that easy, huh? Yeah, that's right. Um, before we do get to the questions, though, do you want to clear up the question that you're going to inevitably, inevitably get asked? Which no, I like answering the cell questions. Okay. Now. Yeah. Great. I, I've, I've uh, uh, Kid Cadet was telling me about a movie star whose panel she hosted. I won't name names. Yeah. Who then, whose manager told her right before the panel began, whatever you do, don't ask him about this movie, which was the reason like 85% of the people had showed up. So I have made my peace with the cell match. I did an entire show for the network about it. I don't mind at all. When you're my age, anything that keeps you wearing sweatpants with no socks and a fanny pack in public is a good thing. <laughs> And if you can be remembered for one or two things at the end of a long career, that's one or two more things that most people are remembered for. So, ask away. What's your name? Hunter. It doesn't matter what your name is. <laughs> I'm kidding. Did anyone see the clip? I put it up on Twitter. I retweeted it. Of The Rock losing his voice twice in a live promo. Amazing. It was so funny. He's like, because The Rock... <laughs> <laughs> and then he, his voice cracked again, and it was it was really good TV. Go ahead, bud. Um, who stands the most out in NXT? Oh, who stands the most out in NXT? Uh, there are several people. You know, the I used to say that Ricochet did, and now he's up on the main roster. And this is why I don't want cameras on. I absolutely do not want any footage of me praising Rhea Ripley. But she really stands out to me. Tony Storm, too, as one of the women. Um, I really enjoy seeing what uh, uh, Warbeard Hansen and his partner are doing as a tag team. There's so many good guys. I watched it, and then I had a chance to talk to the NXT talent. Uh, I spent two days in Orlando, talked to Terry Taylor students, Shawn Michaels students, where we just spent like three hours in a boardroom. And uh, I said, you know, I, I don't watch as much as I used to. I honestly don't because my youngest son is kind of, you know, moved on or, or away. The nice thing about wrestling, it's always there for you. And people will move out, come back, and it's there every Monday night and some Tuesday nights. Some, but it's always there for you. Uh, but I haven't been watching as much. So when I watched a recent NXT program, I was like, it felt like a pay-per-view. It felt like a, you know, a takeover. But those are just a few names that have really impressed me. But a lot of people impressed me. Okay, do you like? Are you a Becky Lynch fan? Yeah, that's a cool shirt, right? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Do you think she's gonna win at Mania? Oh yes, she is. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know? And I think she's on record as saying this that I was the first person person she threw the man idea at. She was like, Mick, what do you think of this? We were doing an appearance for WWE at a. a New Jersey Devils hockey game. She goes, I'm thinking of calling myself the man. What do you think? I was like, oh, that's money. Go ahead and print it. And I was the first person she, she threw that idea at. Pretty cool, right? That's me dropping a name to make me feel more important to all of you. <laughs> but especially to myself. Okay? All right. Where's our, is our witch friend back there still? If you, you know, I'm always interested to hear what non-fans say, and I try to create a very non-threatening atmosphere, I promise you, like, I'm guessing if there's a 53-year-old guy with a decent crowd for a, Friday, for a Friday afternoon, wearing a fanny pack and sweatpants, you might have questions, right? If you have a non-wrestling question and you want to get on that line, I promise you I'll treat it with respect and give you a good answer, okay? No pressure at all. But I want to see you on that line. <laughs> All right, go ahead. It's pretty nerve-wracking to have your time coming up, isn't it? I'm nervous, yeah. All right. 